And then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. For the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. Hey, here we are all pumped up. We've got our swords. We've got our shields. I've encouraged everybody. But man, how can we, how can we come against these 185,000 men who are out there? It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of this guy whom his master, the king of Assyria, sent to reproach the living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Pray, Isaiah, pray for us. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah and Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid. Do you know how many times Jesus said that? Be not afraid. Resurrection night, Easter night, the first experience of the gathered apostles hiding out in the upper room for fear of the Romans doing to them what they saw them do to Jesus. Trembling, hiding out. And Jesus is in their midst and the first words out of his mouth are, be not afraid. Be not afraid. There is nothing that can come against you as a believer and follower of Jesus Christ that hasn't been allowed by him. Not one. Not one. Pastor, you don't understand what I'm facing. How could this be from God? I may not be able to explain to you how that thing could be from God theologically, but I can tell you absolutely positively His promise is He will never leave you or forsake you. Nobody can pluck you out of His hand. He will always be surrounding you. So there must be some good reason why you face the things you are. But in the midst of them, what I say, what Isaiah said, what the Lord says is, don't be afraid. Fear not. I am with you, says the Lord. I am with you. Don't be afraid of the words which you've heard, which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him and he'll hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Hey, don't be afraid. I'll take care of it. Basically, that's what he said. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. You don't even have to do anything except continue to trust in me and by trusting in me, you eliminate that fear. Now in the rest of the chapter, what happens is the king of Assyria sends a second message back. And basically he says, hey, don't believe what your God is saying. Don't believe it. Your God is deceiving you. Nobody can stand before me. And as we take that first stand of faith against the opposition, that's what we'll hear. When we say, no, I'm going to trust in the Lord. He said, he'll take care of it and don't be afraid. What do you think of that? God's lying to you. Don't believe it. Don't believe. You really think God cares about you in this situation? You really do? Mm -hmm. But then Hezekiah prays. Take a look at verse 14. Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers from the king of Assyria, read it, and he went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Hmm. <laughs> Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, Lord God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste to the nations and their lands. And they have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood, stone. Therefore they destroyed them. Now therefore, our Lord, our God, I pray, save us from his hand, 
that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. That, my friends, is the prayer of faith. He didn't demand something of God. He didn't say, well, since I'm your king, set here, you owe me this. That's not the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is he came to God recognizing who he is. Lord, you are the one who created the heavens and the earth. And now I'm laying this out before you. I'm spreading the whole thing. Here's, he, he, he takes the letter itself and spreads it out before the Lord. I love that. Take the struggle that you are facing and lay it out before the Lord. It isn't that he doesn't know about it. But it is your act of faith to say, I'm laying all of this out before you. I'm not going to lay some of it out and hold some of it back because I'll take care of that part. No, Lord, I'm laying this whole thing out before you. I am pouring my heart out fully and completely unto you. I'm giving it to you, Lord. And by faith, I'm asking, Lord, save me from this situation. Save me. Save me. Why? So that you would be glorified. That's what Hezekiah says. So that you would be glorified. Paul could pray and write to, to Timothy, the second letter that we have, knowing he was going to be executed and testify to the fact that the Lord's, the Lord's going to deliver me. That's how the Lord will be glorified. That's how the Lord will be glorified. Because you see, the resolution to the situation in accordance with what we want, our desires, isn't necessarily God's plan. That's why we come in faith and lay it all out before Him and say, Lord, be glorified in this situation. Show yourself to be the Lord God Almighty to all. Because I know that as I surrender and submit and trust in you that you will be glorified and the best possible outcome will come from this situation. Now for Sennacherib and Hezekiah, well, what happened was 185,000 troops or 186,000 troops were suddenly zapped overnight. Angel of the Lord went out and took care of that. And they got up in the morning and saw all the corpses. And Sennacherib decided, eh, maybe I'll go home. So he went home. And he's there in the temple of his God and his two sons murder him. Just like God said, hey, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. I will put a spirit in him so he's going to run away. Exactly what he did. Hezekiah and the armies, though they were prepared for battle and getting pumped up for it, never had to set foot outside of Jerusalem except to go out and bury 186,000 bodies. Hmm. You see, the battle is the Lord's. It's not yours. You are a soldier in the army of the Lord if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Awaiting orders. The battle is His. Just be obedient to what He is saying. Prepare yourself for battle. Don't be surprised by it. Don't be feeling like, gosh, I'm the only person that's going through this. I'm the only one that's facing this. God's forgotten about me. No, He hasn't, and no, you aren't. But God has made the way for you, and He's at work in your life. 